Well, thank you very much. You know, what, what particularly pleases me about all of these announcements, and, and this one um, is especially um, uh, significant today, is that it, over the last couple of weeks, we have seen increasingly Minnesota become yet another pawn in the, the fight between national Republicans and national Democrats, where we're becoming just another ping pong ball in, in this intensely partisan uh, match at the national level. And that is not to Minnesota's advantage. Minnesota needs to continue to be a state that has its own opportunities, its own vision, its own path to the future, where we have leadership that is invested in innovation that comes from Minnesota. You know, I've said all along, I think that, that a Governor Emmer, maybe he moves the state a step or two to the right. A Governor Dayton, maybe a step or two to the left. Minnesota can't be a state that moves sideways. We need to be a state that's moving forward. And so what makes me so excited and pleased about the campaign that we've run is that, as Dr. Osterholm said, this has been a campaign that is focused on ideas. It is a campaign that has brought together a number of different people, independents, Republicans, Democrats, metro, rural, state officials, community officials, business people, all to say, here's our opportunity, here's our need to, to move the state forward. We can't put a stake in the ground and say that our future is going to be invested only in uh, reducing the status quo as, as much as possible, any more than we can put a stake in the ground and say our future is dependent on taxing 4% of the, the population and making our future as, as, or making the status quo as big as possible. The status quo isn't working for a lot of Minnesotans. We need to change the status quo. That's what my campaign has been about, and that's what my administration will be about. And part of my administration is going to be tapping into the expertise, the, the smart people, the innovators that we have in Minnesota. Minnesota does not suffer from a lack of great ideas, a lack of innovation, a lack of smart people. We've suffered from a lack of leadership and a lack of political will. And that's what this campaign is addressing, and that's what, what um, I hope Minnesotans think about when they come to the polls on, on November 2nd. Over the years, I've had the, the great good fortune to work with Mike Sarisi on, on uh, the tobacco litigation, providing some of the communication support around that. Um, it is an issue that I know Mike came into feeling passionately about, and an issue that I feel passionately about. How do we make a healthier Minnesota? And it is, is for that reason, and, and for all of the other uh, ways in which Mike Sarisi has contributed to, uh, to Minnesota, that I'm so pleased to have his, uh, his endorsement today and so pleased to uh, turn the podium over to Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's nice to be here back in the Capitol. Um, it, uh, it's difficult uh, for a Democrat uh, sometimes to stand up and say you're going to endorse someone else. But when the choice is so clear uh, to this state, uh, it's an easy choice. This is not a negative against any other candidate. It's a positive about Tom Horner. Uh, we are at, I think everybody knows, a very critical time in this state's history. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I grew up here. I've spent my entire life here. I was born here. Uh, I'm a second generation American, uh, almost basically a first, because my father lived for a number of years in Sicily. Uh, and we've been very fortunate as a family and we've been fortunate because people understood, those who came before us, that you have to defer present income for future gain. In other words, you have to invest in the state of Minnesota. And we've all been beneficiaries of that. I support Tom because I think his message is broader. It brings a broader message to all Minnesotans. It's more inclusive. And it's more realistic with respect to where we sit in the 21st century. Uh, the, the issues that I feel most passionately about education, health care, and job growth are the issues that I think Tom speaks with greater clarity than Mark Dayton does. This is not a slight against Mark Dayton. He's a decent and great Minnesotan in my judgment. But Tom is the most qualified to lead this state uh, in this, at this critical time in our history. Uh, I 
believe that Tom will be the next governor, and I believe that he'll lead us in a way that will bring people from all parts of the political spectrum together. Uh, that's why I'm endorsing uh, Tom Horner. Thank you very much. Questions? Did you receive a lot of calls from, from Democrats um, trying to get you to not endorse Mr. Horner or to endorse Mr. Dayton? Well, as you can well appreciate, uh, I talked to a lot of Democrats and a lot of Republicans and a lot of independents, and all of them are pressing for the candidates that they believe in. So the answer to that would be yes, but it's true across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Mike, uh, are you a Democrat? Of course I am, Pat, and, and uh, if, uh, you know, if you look at my history, uh, I've supported Democrats my entire life. In fact, this is the second time, you know, I'm getting old, I'm a little older than you, Pat. Uh, not, much. And, and, and not much, but a little bit. At age uh, 64, I think this is the second time that I will not have voted for a Democrat. What was the first? I won't tell you that. This one's public, the other one wasn't, but it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. You're a tough guy uh, who, is this revenge for the Democrats? Is, uh, oh, the oh my Democrats God, no. For all the things that... No, I mean, take, take a look at all the Democrats where Ann and I are supporting this year. I mean, you know, from Tim Walls to uh, Betty McCullum uh, to Terrell Clark uh, to uh, Senate candidates outside of the state of Minnesota. No, I'm, I'm still a Democrat, but uh, this is a choice here in Minnesota that we have to make for the, uh, for what I believe is the best interest of the state. And, you know, if, if you're asking me, is it state or party, which comes first, in my judgment, it's state. So you're saying it has nothing to do with 2000? No, 2000. No, I, I endorsed Mark uh, for a senator in 2000 and backed him financially. Of course it's not. I think the world of Mark Dayton. His family has done a tremendous amount for this state. I said that across the uh, state when I ran against him in 2000, and those of you, you, all, you look a little young, but the ones that were there at that time know that that's what I did. You know, we, we gotta get away from that. I mean, those are the types of, of, of questions and attitudes that I think have brought us to where we are today politically. Uh, both political parties seem to think you have to attack somebody because they have made a reasoned judgment as to who they're gonna support and say that that's necessarily a negative against somebody else. It isn't. What it is is a positive for the person you're voting for. Well, the Democrats' are, leadership is not going to be healthy with this at all. I mean, what does this do with your long-term, for your long-term relationship with the Minnesota DFL? Well, I think that uh, most, uh, Mark, uh, most Democrats are reasoned individuals. I hope they won't uh, say the things that the Republican uh, uh, state chairman said about uh, George and Sally Pillsbury, who are tremendous citizens of the state of Minnesota. Uh, and uh, I don't, you know, some may hold a grudge. That's, that's their judgment. That's, uh, that's their right, you know, in a, in a, in a democracy. Uh, I just don't operate that way, you know. Are you a major financial contributor to the Horner campaign? I have contributed the maximum, yes. Tom, Other questions? Tom, did you say that your relationship with the tobacco settlement, did you, did you work with the MPAT money even? Well, I first got to, to know Mike when um, he was representing Blue Cross in the state in the tobacco litigation um, and, and worked with Blue Cross um, to, to communicate the, the litigation. And then, yes, I did continue working with uh, MPAT, what is now Clearway, Minnesota. Yep. So, so you had a contract, and did you accept state funds then for your contract? No, there were no state funds involved. Was, was the, can you tell us what funds were involved? Well, sure. My client initially was Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota. And then I continued to, to do work with MPAT, which now is known as Clearway Minnesota. But those are not state funds. That was um, a separate part of the, uh, the settlement. The settlement. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, <clears throat> in the latest poll, your, your support was declining a bit. What's your path forward to election day? Just a broader question. Well, you know, where, where I think all of the, the surveys have, have uh, put me and put the whole race and where our private uh, surveys show is that there still are a large number of undecided voters. I mean, here we are two weeks to go and an extraordinarily high number of both undecided voters and soft supporters. And I think part of that is the, the recognition that, um, you know, Tom Emmer, 
maybe reaching a, a ceiling of, of 30%. I think there are a lot of supporters um, who now are um, uh, either undecided or, or softly in Mark Dayton's camp that um, are, are willing to move if they believe that, that I can win. That's the, the case that I have to make, is that I can win, and that, uh, because I think I've made the case that, that among the three candidates, I think for many Minnesotans, as we saw in the, the newspaper editorial endorsements around the state yesterday, um, uh, or on Sunday, I think most Minnesotans, many Minnesotans, believe that I would be the, uh, the best governor. Now I have to show that I can win. But I think I show that I can win by showing that I would be the best governor, showing that I do have the, the vision for Minnesota, that it's not enough just to take a step to the right or a step to the left. We can't just keep moving sideways. This is a time when we need to, to be marching four square into the future. And so for me, it, it, to, to have the kind of support that is coming from across the political spectrum, I think reflects the kind of governor that I would be, the kind of ability that I bring to engage Minnesotans and, and create the kind of future that we need for the, the state, for jobs, for economic growth, for education, for health care, for all the things that are important to this state. Republican, uh, former Republican Senator Dave Durbin has been with you essentially since the beginning. Mm -hmm. We've uh, then heard of other prominent Republicans, former Governor Carlson coming out for you, and now finally a prominent Democrat. Are there likely to be more? Democrats announcing that they're supporting it. We, we are going to have some more endorsements between now and Election Day. Yes. You're great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.